On October 13, 1947, these guys were getting ready to fly into a hurricane. They were the team of Project Cirrus, a then-classified effort by the US Army, to learn more about the weather. The team was led by Vincent J. Sheffer, who the previous year had discovered a method to modify clouds in his lab. Sheffer was ready to test his theories on an actual hurricane. And not just any hurricane. The storm was enormous. They named it Hurricane King, and he left southern Florida submerged under six feet of water. But more importantly, it was heading out to sea. This gave the team the perfect chance to test their theories in the real world safely. Or at least, that's what they thought. If they were successful, they would usher humanity into a new era in which not even the sky is the limit. Or commit an immodesty of planetary scale. Today, we call their method cloud seeding, and its popularity is bound to grow. It could stop droughts, help fight wildfires, and prevent crop-destroying hail. So, how did their mission go? And can we really make it rain? Rain was always crucial to human life. When the rain stops, cities die and societies collapse. It's a story of ancient hubris and sort of trying to do something in a complex geophysical way with very limited uh, techniques. He's James Fleming, a historian who wrote a book about the history of rainmaking. A heroic saga populated by weather warriors, rain wizards, and simply charlatans. One of my favorite images in the book is uh, the medieval hail archers. If the grape uh, harvest was threatened or if the storms were going to ruin something, he would send out his archers and they would fire arrows into the sky. Until recently, farmers in Austria used to shoot consecrated guns at storms in attempt to dispel them. Some guns were loaded with nails, ostensibly to kill the witches riding in the clouds. In their desperation for rain, people turned to religion, wizardry, or theories they didn't really understand. If you're going to lose your whole harvest, if you're going to lose your grapes and your whole wine production, uh, it's better to do something than nothing was sort of the logic. Real demonstration that man was able to alter the course of the weather. Today, the wind has changed. In our study, we showed that actually cloud seeding works, and we also showed that we can produce uh, measurable precipitation from cloud seeding. Katja Friedrich is part of the team that for the first time scientifically proved that we can make it rain. And the maximum that we could generate was 136 Olympic-sized swimming pools, and we cloud seeded for 25 minutes. But how does it work? So the basic concept is you have these clouds um, that have a lot of tiny supercooled liquids. These tiny cloud droplets, they're basically, they're hovering in the cloud. They're too small for gravity to pull them down, so they're hovering up there. You can think of them as raindrops on a window. They stick there until a bigger drop absorbs them and they become so heavy that gravity pulls them down. You put something in there to make them freeze and start to stick to each other and then they become bigger and heavier enough to fall onto the ground. Sheffer discovered this effect during a lab experiment in 1946. Armed with this breakthrough, the team directed three planes right into Hurricane King. They dropped 36 kilos of dry ice into their storm. Their report claimed there was a modification in the clouds that had been seeded. And uh, boy, it hit the headlines. Newspapers hailed the hurricane busting team. But despite their claims of success, it wasn't clear how the technique could be used. Modifying clouds and also even predicting when and where it rains is really complicated. And we all know that, because how many times do we see in the weather forecast it's going to rain and it doesn't rain? Cloud seeding is also very expensive. And it only works if there are already clouds. 
The problem with cloud seeding is, is it worth doing? And I always say, you know, it depends on how desperate we are for water. You need to be really desperate. I think the U.S. has done that out of desperation because they know they're running out of water. And many places are desperate enough. The UAE claims to be able to increase its rainfall by up to 35% thanks to cloud seeding. And China has already employed an estimated 35,000 people to seed clouds. But rainmaking comes with its own risks, especially if you're tinkering with nature in its most disruptive mood. After newspapers celebrated the Cirrus team's accomplishments, the hurricane suddenly changed its course and hit Savannah, Georgia. Many blamed the devastation on Sheffer and stressed that they were pretty sore at the Army and Navy for fooling around with the hurricane. One lesson is that we're not in control, although you'd hope to be. The other is that uh, we have too much uh, confidence in our own abilities including our ability to sway a hurricane. A retrospective study on Project Cirrus found the previous storms had followed a similar path. Wind currents and not cloud seeding had likely caused the storm to veer suddenly. This points to a larger problem rainmakers face, one that has to do not with technology, but politics. Expansionist China is now looking at the skies. It has revealed plans to drastically expand on experimental weather modification program. Cloud seeding can lead to tensions between countries. The massive push is sending alarm bells ringing in India. Turn clouds into a competitive resource. The one case that we showed was a case where it was really, really windy. And the company that we were cloud seeding with, they didn't really want to cloud seed because they said, you know, we want to cloud seed Bio uh, Idaho, we don't want to cloud seed Wyoming. And spread fears of a covert effort to control the weather. So we're going to go outside and see if the snow is fake. For example, after a snowstorm struck Texas in February, baseless conspiracy theories blamed it on cloud seeding. Thank you, Bill Gates, for trying to fucking trick us that this is real snow. Cloud seeding remains very controversial. Tinkering with Mother Nature was not something to be taken lightly. People should not be playing God. It, this is not just the solution to everything. Cloud seeding is just one puzzle piece in this really big picture of like a water plan. Rainmaking has long ceased to be the realm of wizards and charlatans. In specific cases, it's already proven to work. Climate change might make larger scale interventions seem more appealing. But past acts of overconfidence, deception, and recklessness force a question. We have the technology to influence the weather, but do we have the wisdom 